You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and today we have the winner of the Bronzeback Yak Challenge for the Northern Virginia Kayak uh, Bass Association, or NVKBA, Jackie. Jackie, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, he won it with 88.25 inches, which again, using the old mathy calculator here, that's 17 inches per keeper. Um, I'm going to say worst case scenario, and I know I know Mike and I talk about this a lot about how much that converts over. That's easily close to a three pound average, I think. You're getting close yeah, to a three yeah. pound average, and that's that's 15 plus pounds of smallmouth, dude. That's fun as hell. I don't care if it's a kayak <laughs> or both. That's a lot of fun. That's living. That it was definitely a good day, and that's a fun way to fish and a fun fish to catch in a small, you know, in a river setting. It's just a really good time. How how long have you been in this area and just been kayak fishing in general? Um, I've been in this area for a while since the seventies. I'm, I'm a seventies child, so I've been here a while, and I've been kayak fishing since. I mean, I saw a video of Jeff Little like a million years ago, like when he was in college or something, and my buddy Coleman, who I fish with, Jim Coleman, uh, who also competes, was like, we can do that. You know, we were wading the Potomac at that time in the Shenandoah and, and some other smaller rivers. And uh, we bought like a Loon 110s and started decking them out and fishing with those. And next thing you know, we're in sit on tops. And next thing you know, I got 15 kayaks, you know, like, so I, I feel like I'm, I'm not a pioneer, but I've definitely been doing it a while. What was your first kayak? Uh, I think it was a Loon 110. I think it's 11 foot boat. Um, sit inside. Uh, didn't come with anything. Old Town Loon. Yeah, that was made by Old Town. And now I've got the Old Town 120 sitting out here. <laughs> you know, top water 120. So, um, yeah, that was, I like, I missed that. I wore that hole into the bottom of that boat fishing these rivers. <clears throat> and, and then just for the audience to know, where are you generally located right now? You said you're in the Northern Virginia or Frederick area, correct? Yeah, I live in Frederick, Maryland. Frederick, Maryland. Um, yeah, I've lived here, I think, for 11 years now. I was born in uh, the Mount Vernon, Haba Valley area, so I've been fishing the lower Potomac and the Shenandoah and, uh, my whole life, uh, but I somehow ended up in Frederick. Um, so, yeah, we like it here. I have had Jeff Green on the show, Shallow Water Adventures, and sometimes we hint at the Monocacy and Antietam and these creeks of Maryland that flow in there. Ha have you ever fished those before? I know it's a little off topic, but I've never had a Frederick person actually on the show before. <laughs> I've definitely fished the Monocacy. Um, not wouldn't say a ton. I drive over it to get to the Potomac, like right over it. And the Monocacy, I live in um, the east side of Frederick. It's literally one mile from my house. Oh, cool. Um, and you can catch fish. It's That's not the problem. There's plenty of fish. Um, it's more of a muddy bank. Um, not a lot of rock, not as much rock as I like. Uh, I've never caught like a really big hammer smallmouth out of it. But when I want to take my son fishing and we want to go like just have a little fun, it's definitely. Um, fun to do. Now there are some other smaller creeks a little north um, that I've heard it can produce, but um, I generally just go to the Potomac or the Shenandoah, just go back to my roots. Yeah. Cause like, it's something where I get people asking all the time, like where they can fish depending on where they're located. And I, I don't know if I should recommend the Monocacy yet. Cause I, I haven't personally fished it. And so getting you on saying like there are fish there, that it is a place that if you're in Frederick, you can, oh, go no, there you can them. catch fish and it, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but the oh, good, good thing about it too, for floating, it's a good beginner float. And it is not a lot of, you can learn to fish a kayak, a river kayak at the Monocacy without being worried or, hmm. you know, you can generally not have to worry about tipping or anything. And you'll catch fish. Like you, you can catch fish. I can go there right now and catch fish. Um, but it's just there's something about the Potomac that's just a chance of catching that five pounder and the twenty two incher that I have not seen in the in the Monocacy. And I, but maybe I'll give it another chance. <laughs> no, no, that, that that's good information because yeah, like that that's there's so many of these little creeks and stuff. Antietam is one that I've always wanted to explore as well, um, just to see what kind of potential they have because like it's also not just about the big ones, but it's just catching. And so that's good to yes. know that for people, if you're out there and you might not catch a, a, a big one, but you can actually get your kid to hook something, which is you, super awesome. You can catch a big one. I just don't think there is as many, mm -hmm. you know, I think you can, you know, you can catch fish. Um, you can throw some top water out there, almost any little top water you'll catch fish on at spinnerbait. Um, but I just don't feel you're going to catch a bunch of big ones. You might get one nice one and a bunch of small ones and have a great day. And you know, it's close to home. So it's just, uh, yeah just 
I, I like the, the fat ball to catch that five pounder um, in addition to catching a bunch of fish as well. If I, if I get lucky. <clears throat> you went with Jackson and if I'm to making sure that to, to I'm correct in my old brain noodle here, Jackson, they yeah. have the pedal version uh, without the flippers, correct? Yeah, but I was I'm straight paddle, no okay. pedal. This is an old school, a Jackson Kusa or a Kusa, I got look at it. I don't remember it's the Kusa. I think it's a uh, 11, 11 foot eight inches um, river kayak. Um, just we're, we were, I was going down, you know, a stretch of river, so I wouldn't. I'll just paddle when I have to. Um, yeah. So my my drive kayak is the Old Town uh, AP one twenty. Autopilot 120. That that's what I use in the lakes and such. So we've got the old internet here. So just to make sure. There we go. This one right here. Internet. Okay. Yeah. Mine's yeah. much older, but yeah, it's the same boat. Now, so this is the one that you used in your tournament, correct? Yes. Okay. So and this is good to know. So like, and you went straight paddle, no torpedo, no electronic propulsion system. Nothing current. <laughs> now, current. and I think it's important because you have other people on for, for better or worse that either they use pedal, they use just paddle or they have, you know, a motor. And I think that's important when it comes to your tactics and your practice. And that kind of okay. gets us into, you know, when you went out there for this tournament, what, what kind of first history do you have on the rivers and, and which river did you even choose to fish? I chose the Shenandoah and I did a little intro for NBKBA. Um, I've been fishing the Shenandoah since I was, could walk. Uh, my grandmother had a house on the Shenandoah. It's still there. Um, she's since passed, but my grandfather lives there still. And um, so I chose the Shenandoah mainly for that reason. So I hadn't fished it since this tournament last year. I fished the Shenandoah, the same wow. stretch. And um, I hadn't been in that kayak since that tournament last year, which let me tell you. Dude, wow. It's quite, even though I've fished it my whole life and I've had the kayak forever, I was definitely, I was definitely discombobulated for the first hour or so. Yeah, for sure. Like it was definitely, cause I have a bass boat too. Um, okay, good. So I, I, I boat fish a lot. Um, so yeah, the river kayak was having the best of me there in the beginning. <laughs> what, what, um, I probably just slipped my memory. What, what's your other kayak called? Just to give like a comparison. Um, and everything. The, what is it? The, um, old town ap 120 the uh, one with the trolling motor yeah God, dude um, that is a huge that's a huge difference go back and forth yeah it's a massive difference i could stand in that thing and, and dance if i wanted to the big one but yeah the river kayak is a little more subtle not hard no room to put anything where's my neck gonna go um but um for this at the river levels the way they are right now i just thought that was my best chance to really get to the fish that i wanted to get to now you you said that you basically you were going to fish the same area and you just got you know you went right back into this kayak here before this tournament was that by by reading the conditions being like this sets up nice or if it's just like i'm comfortable in this spot i'm going to fish history history yeah just knowing that there are a bunch of uh, large hungry fish if you catch them in these conditions um low water clear water uh sun's going to be out that I should be able to catch fish. It doesn't always work that way, um, but I kind of just went on history. Um, just like I caught a bunch of nice fish in the river in the Shenandoah, uh, especially in low water conditions with blue sunny skies. Um, so I was, that's the way I was going. Uh, if it had gotten higher, I may have chose to go to the Potomac and um, you know fish eddies and rocks um, and stuff like that. Uh, but at that river level, I thought the Shenandoah was my chance to win. <laughs> By chance, do you kind of like remember the conditions or, or uh, an outline um, that they were like? Yeah, um, crystal clear water. I mean, you can see a lot of fish. Um, I would say the average depth. The fish were in all depths of water, but I would I was like trying to fish three to five feet. Uh, that if, if I was lucky, there was a lot of uh, less than that, <laughs> which which was a challenge just to get through the day. Um, but yeah, I'd say three to five feet was my target range and the water is crystal clear i mean as clear as can be and i like the sun to be out um when i'm swimming out fishing i just couldn't wait for that sun to get out in that fog it was a colder morning foggy overcast um I couldn't wait for that to burn off and that sun to come out what was that what was the current like was it ripping pretty hard or was it just kind of like it's normal low flow yeah. it was a pretty low flow i mean it was ripping hard for as shallow as it was so it was a nice flow but it Usually when it's that shallow, you kind of like have to like bump along, bump along, bump along. It kept me moving throughout the day. Um, um, I use an anchor on front and rear of my um, river kayak so I can stop in spots where I want. Smart. I think that's kind of like one of the differences that, that in river fishing that a lot of people don't do in that environment. They just kind of just move on along. Um, 
So I was able to anchor up in some key spots and fish where I wanted to fish. So going into the day, you're, you you launch in the morning. What what is your game plan in general? My game plan was to get out early because I, we can launch pretty much whenever we want as long as we can check in. Um, so I wanted to get out early in case someone else was starting in the same spot. I wanted to go. I was going to float a stretch of river, so I wanted to get down ahead of anybody, any other competitors that may be in, on the same stretch of river. So that was my game plan to get out early, be ready to fish at lines in and be in a spot where I think there's fish at lines in. And I call it nothing at lines in. <laughs> it took me like two hours to boat a fish. No, but that, that's good there. Cause you know, on this show, I really like to kind of get into the, the psychology and cause it's just like whether you're, you know, football's a great example. It's you have your game plan for the first set and then you get yeah. punched in the face and you have to make your, your changes and your ability to basically call audibles a lot of times is what makes you hold the winners, hold the trophy. So, but you go two hours, dude, my mind would be playing tricks on me. Like how, how, how are you doing mentally at that point? It was good. Um, I had missed a cu couple and missed it. Um, so I'd missed a couple and they were strong bites and I knew I was pretty confident that once the water warmed up and things started moving around and the sun came out that I would be able to catch fish. Um, I missed a good one. I think you never really know these things hit so ferociously. Um, but it felt good. Sounded good. Everything was good. Um, and that kind of like set me off a little bit. I'm like, oh, that one would have been on the board. That would have been on the board all day. And that kind of set me a little bit, but I was like, okay, you got a lot of river ahead of you that you know is good. You're not even up to your, your juice yet. So just stay calm, tug away, you know, just see what's going on. Now, not having the internet to watch the leaderboard could be helpful, could not be helpful. I couldn't get online. Um, so I never was panicking when someone, you know, someone else had 80 inches on the board or something. I might have gotten a little more flustered. Um, I did check later and someone did have 80 inches on the board, I think, and, or close to it um like 75 or something i was like uh oh <laughs> i'm gonna start catching fish and, and that's something that we're gonna have to talk about too because that's the fascinating thing with kayak fishing um is the cell service like i was fishing the main stem and in practice i didn't think about it but when i got into the into the tournament and i caught my first good one i think it was close to 17 inches and i'm like oh i should probably like stop and, and upload this and i realized shit i have no service yeah. Am I going to be able to get the hell out of here in time to upload it? And I had to think about that in my calculations. And so that is kind of interesting with, with you, when you're fishing these rivers like the Shenandoah or the upper Potomac, or maybe even parts of the Rappahannock. I don't know if you don't have any cell service, you have to factor that into your day of like, I got to get off the water in time and drive to a place that I can upload this. Oh, there was a stretch of river that it just pains me to paddle through that I had to get through until I found service because I thought I had a close to a winning bag, but I know I had a good bag, um, a stringer. Uh, but I just, I had until, and thank goodness, somehow I got three bars and I just, I got a text. I'm like, Oh, I stopped, Boop, put anchor out. I'm like, Oh my God, I have service. And I, I had, I think I had none uploaded. I don't really know what went through and what, cause it would just say going and I don't know if it ever went, but I'm pretty sure I had to upload all my fish with a half hour left in the tournament mm -hmm. and hope they get accepted. Cause they, you know, like I didn't, and that was very nerve wracking. And I was like, I don't know if these fish are going to be accepted. I don't know what's going to happen. If they, it says, and then it said they all went through. So I got the email saying they went through. So that was reassuring. But I had one, I had two 18 and a halves and one, the picture didn't come out. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, did I send the wrong picture? Cause they all look alike when you're trying to go through the app later mm -hmm. in the day and make sure you're on the right fish at the right size. So that was just racking my brain. And so I put in that wrong fish, I'm going to lose 18 and a half inches. Um, cause that fish, never got counted for me and it never will be but i still keep the picture to remind me to take my time and make sure the picture is beautiful take um but yeah it, it, that was the hardest part for me i mean the hardest part obviously is you know long day fishing the mind games that goes on when you're not catching fish but um not being able to upload fish that i know and make give me it might give me a chance to you know win the tournament was very very tough to deal with and i was like okay i'm gonna get out and find a mcdonald's <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like quick so that, yeah. that gets into it. You got to factor that into it. And, and, and I've learned my lesson now that, yeah, if you're fishing in an area that has no service, you've got to make sure you leave yourself time in the back half of the day. Um, but, but getting to the beginning of the day, so we're two hours into it. You are getting blow ups. You are hooking fish. So you're, you're in an area that has them. So now it's not the mind game of like, do I need to move to get to fish? It's more of like, I got to calm down and execute. So right. when do you catch your first keeper? Um, it was a 16 and a half incher and I would say right about the two hour mark. Um, uh, I, I didn't, I, you know, I should have gone back and looked at the time. It all got so chaotic, you know, when things start happening and you're floating down a river and there's fish jumping around. But, uh, 
it was a 16 incher was the first one and i was like 16 and a half and i was like okay cool let's get him on the board that's a solid solid start um and um Comes and down. I think my, yeah cool way it calls me down especially you know i don't know if you've ever made a well, i'm sure you have made a kayak uh, river smallmouth sit on that board and take a nice <laughs> they're, not, they're not a willing participant <laughs> they are not they are they do not want so i got a good picture tried to upload it it wouldn't upload I looked an hour like you know half hour later it's still trying to upload i'm like okay it's gonna be that day again where i'm not gonna upload my fish until i can find a spot so yeah dude that rings back because like i could not get them to hit anything else but a crankbait and that was my okay. first time really in a tournament trying to deal with holding down something with tro car hooks in its face. <laughs> oh my and God. Those things. Oh my God. They're mean as hell. And, and, and they're in the boat with you. you they're know? in the boat with you. And I had to make a decision. Like, do I, do I just try to enforce the net job versus flipping them? Because dude, if I get a hook in me, I'm, this is going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. So I, I try to make the conscious effort to do that. And something else that's weird, because I, I have a boat too, and I still fish boat tournaments. My crankbait setup is really set up for the boat to where I can move mm -hmm. and play. And yeah. that, that thing killed me last year, because on Lake Anna and the, the river tournament, you know, I kept losing fish on that crankbait setup. And I think it's because it's too, it's too, it gives too much. And I need to speed yeah, it up, I think. I agree. I'm a, I'm a, I love to fish crankbaits. That's when I'm on my boat, I'm almost always selling a crankbait. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I agree. It, like I, I try not to throw them in my kayak if I don't have to, not that I know I'm not going to catch fish. It's just so hard, especially with smallmouth. Yeah. It's hard to keep them like locked in. And one tip I would say is I, I learned, like, if you're going to think you're going to measure the fish, just net it, you know, just net it. It's you can net it spin it calm it down you know gather yourself you know get everything ready it's calmer you know get it in the water if you want to put it on your grips and you know let it relax a little bit but i found that not netting them is like even more work because they're flopping around everywhere mm -hmm. <laughs> and like they're angry they're they're a mean little fish i love them oh dude it is it is a challenge i mean the challenge really begins with them once you actually net them and try to put them on the board like i thought it was i thought it was tough and then again last year is the first year I, I dabbled with this in a tournament setting it was tough weighing largemouth on a board smallmouth are another animal you cannot like let up mentally when you put them on the board because they will go off and it's just it's insane and, and that one that i had i mentioned like several times that i have the bad picture of it's a beautiful bad picture and it jumped <laughs> off the board and i just kind of let up for us like you said i gave that one second like okay i got a good picture let me look at it mm -hmm. and he's like okay boom see ya. <laughs> and i said like, well yeah, i got yeah. this i got a good picture and i'm like i couldn't read one inch on that on, on my on my ruler and i, um, I was just like oh no come back <laughs> come back because i didn't have five then you know i had i think that was my fourth fish um and it was 18 and a half inches and that was painful <laughs> i'm still i'm never gonna forget it never gonna forget it so mm. then you, you you get your four and then at this point that you have four how many inches do you think you have just spitball it like um um, I had a tw I had a twelve incher in there, so I had a twelve point seven five, and I had two eighteens and a sixteen, an eighteen point seven five, and an eighteen, a uh, twelve point seven five, and a sixteen and a half. So I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's not counting the one that went off the board that I keep mentioning. <laughs> he didn't. He doesn't count because I think he's not going to count the tournament. The picture is not good. Um, but you got so your first kicker. Good. And that's what's so important when you're fishing tournament is you have that first one that yeah. you know is not coming out of the live well. You know, you're not going to be bumping them off, you know, when you're doing pictures. You got the 18 incher. Were all these fish in the same area or are you constantly moving? Constantly moving. Yeah. Just looking for new water, looking for new water. Um, it's a stretch of river I know well, so I can go back and forth on it and feel like I'm going to, the fish are either going to be there or they're not, but I can come back. They're not. As long as I don't make a bunch of noise and spook them, I, I have a chance to come back and, and catch them. Um, and maybe the shade line changes. Maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe they just want to eat. But um, I I fished a, a lot of water. I covered a lot of water. Um, just trying, looking for new fish. <clears throat> you got four. Yeah. What was going through your head trying to get that fifth? Like, what time of day? Are we talking like you got five minutes left on the clock? Are you saying it's about no, no, no. I, I had once it happened, it happened pretty, you know, within two hours of my first fish. I wow. think I was at four and um, I, they were missing. I, I was using top water. They were missing it, too, occasionally. So I'm like, I knew, was pretty confident that, you know, that I was going to catch five. It's whether they're going to be the right five. It's not going to be, you know, going to be the problem. But with two 18s on there. And uh, I was like, okay, we can catch two more 18s. <laughs> um, and my smallest fish is 16 and a quarter and a half. 
we're going to be looking good. And we have about three hours to do that. So I think I like my chances um, of putting a nice stringer together. What, what fish really nailed it to you that you thought, Oh, I have a shot at this thing. Um, right after I, the one jumped off that I got the bad picture of, I hooked the giant and it was a far cast and it hit right away. Boom. Mm. So I'm fighting this fish forever. It was just awesome. And, um, what I didn't do is retie, even though I'm, I'm using braid, oh, gosh. um, 30 pound braid, uh, and, uh, I didn't retie and I fought this fish all the way to the boat. Just a beautiful fight. You know, many just out of the water a bunch of times, get it right to the boat, get my net and it breaks me off at the boat. And while that was a terrible experience, it was a beautiful experience too. Like people that haven't fought a small mouth in a river and out of your kayak and seen this fish jump. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that was an 18.5. I couldn't measure That fish is at least 18 that I can't measure. All I gotta do is keep plugging, keep plugging and I'll catch another 18. And then it's just another 18 and I'll win the tournament. That's what I just kept thinking mm -hmm. that way. Um, and it wasn't that easy as I'm making it sound now. I was actually freaking out because the lure was gone. The fish was gone. Shit, I just had one jump off. The <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, well, at least spit the lure out. I'm like, why? Well, you know, nope, everything's gone. So, um, I'm making it sound much cooler than I was. I was actually kind of freaking out, but I just, uh, one thing I thought of when I, in this, when I was thinking about this interview, one thing that might've helped me is I, because of family obligations, I missed the first two events. So I wasn't really fishing for points. I was just fishing to win. You know, I wasn't, I'm not going to win angler of the year. I missed two events already. So I'm just trying to catch five huge fish. That's all I was trying to do. I wasn't worried about how many I'm going to, you know, getting pictures of a bunch of them going up a quarter inch at a time. Before I put in my fifth fish that I took a picture of it, I probably let three go that were 12 to 14 inches just because I knew that's not going to win. That's not going to win this tournament. Damn. Um, so, because, and that's not, I'm not, I mean, it could have been stupid, but it, it's either win or not. I'm not going to get angler of the year. And I said, uh, I said to myself, like, hey, this could be this really dumb. But the time it takes to take a picture of those smallmouth, you could be fishing and be on an 18 incher, you know, it, rather than spend 15, well, five minutes at least trying to get this thing to settle to get a picture of it. There's good logic there because, especially with smallmouth, that wolf pack mentality. If if you are so, I mean, example is like this this one decent one I caught last year on a crankbait, I had to, after I put him in the net, I paddled myself over off the spot and got myself situated to where I could then just mess with him, get him unhooked, wade and everything. So I wasn't in the juice anymore. Granted, I didn't have as many anchors as you did, but the same point is like, it took a lot of time out of my, out of my schedule, so to speak, to, to do that, to get back in there, man, if you can yeah. just unhook and go, and there was a school or a couple of them fired up because smallmouth on a river guys, they will, they will wolf pack together. It gives you yes. that opportunity to catch that bigger one. Absolutely. And you can, you can catch five. Like if, when you're on to a school like that and they get all, they get crazy smallmouth. Um, they're crazier than large mouth when they start schooling. And then you just know you got to, it's most me putting an, another picture of a 12 and a half. That's not going to win me the tournament on the board. You know, I just said, I'm not going to win that way. I just have to just throw him off as fast as possible and keep going, keep going, keep going. The fish are here. <clears throat> I got, I figured it out. I, so I was just like, I, and I think that's only because I wasn't in contention for points. You know, I, I wouldn't, I would definitely put my fifth one in there no matter what size it was, if I needed the points, but I'm not going to win angler of the year, most likely having missed two tournaments already. So I was just like, my only chance ha having fun here is going to be winning <clears throat> or top fiving, you know, winning when I didn't think for a chance I would win. So, but I felt pretty good by the end of the day, but not in the middle. <laughs> Why do you think the braid snapped? Did you say you were fishing I, braid, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, um, I looked at it and then I, maybe it got under a rock right there. Cause this, mm -hmm. you know, I was real shallow. So it might've got under a rock and, and, and cut it or I didn't retie and I'd called it 18 and a half. And that was also a, a legendary battle. Um, so it might've got nicked on a rock or something. Um, not retiring when you catch an 18 and has river small mouth is not smart. And I, I don't know why I, overconfidence is my opinion. I should have retired. How long does it take to retire? Everybody knows to retire, retire, retire. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just being eager to fish. And I don't know why it snapped, but I just know I was heartbroken because he was, I, I'd fought him from as far as I could cast a spinning rod to my boat. And he broke off like right here where I could see him, you oh, know, like I had a net like, like this. And it's like, boof. I was like, what? Oh, no. oh, that, that is, I mean, the amount of heartbreak that you had to deal with in this tournament to, cool. and it's funny because like I've had, you know, I've had Alex on the show too when, when he won. And basically it's, 
nothing. There's not a lot of problems. Everything is efficient. It goes straight through. Boom, boom, boom. But then you get other guys. And, and I think this happens more than we like to believe where things are not going right, but we just do enough. We do enough correctly to win. Because if it's your time, it's your time. Yeah, I think I got really lucky even being able to upload the proper fish in the, like five minutes and, you know, continue fishing a little bit and uh, be able to catch another 18 incher after losing two. Um, you know, like that, that doesn't happen every day, you know. Um, so and everybody, you know, I fished with, one time I was a co-angler and Mark Daniels was my boater and he, I always try to take something away. And he says, I never talk about the one that gets away because everybody has the one that gets away. And it's something, like, OK, Mark Daniels, never talk about the one that gets away. Move on now, you know, um, like. It happens to everybody, <laughs> but it was, that was, a, that one was another heartbreaker because it took my lure <laughs> with it, you know, hopefully well, it got it out. And let's mm. get into that because what were you catching them on? Um, when I'm going smallmouth on that river, on a, on a shallow river, I almost always go buzz bait, like could be different colors and such. This is a, um, t- my sponsor, Tennessee Lunker Buzz. Um, it's got two blades. Let's do it. And it just annoys those guys. It's a big one. Oh, here we go. Um, I was going for bigger bites. This is a three eighths. It's a huge people Damn. like some people fish small for small mouth. I do not. Um, so yeah, I caught almost all my, I think I caught another one on this, uh, lunker stick. It's just basically a stick bait. Um, I just throw it in a deeper, deeper hole. I threw it up in the shade, but almost everything was on a buzz bait. Um, Wh- Tennessee wacky lunker. rig or, uh, yeah, I, I, sometimes when I, with, I won't do that for small meat, smallies because they're so ferocious and the hook just goes all willy nilly. But, um, what I, my thought was, I kept it like this for follow-up bites. When they miss, missed my buzz bait, I was going to you know, throw this in there, and they would grab it. Never happened. Um, but that's what, that was my thought, and I thought the wacky rig would be the nice presentation of it just like falling down in there while they were looking for whatever they had just smashed on the top. But as much as I thought that, it never worked. Um, they missed it, and I'd throw it in there, and they would just – I think these fish were coming out of crevices and cracks and under rocks and just going right back once they missed. They – you know, they weren't really interested in trying again. <clears throat> when you're dealing with that quick of a bite, did you, were you using any kind of like stinger hook? No. I Wow. That's impressive. I, in the, and on braids, there's a lot of things I'm doing, like not by the book and I'm using a, a spinning rod. Um, um, a lot of things I'm not I'm doing, not by the book in this particular tournament, it's just because I have some history on the Shandoah and it's just kind of like what works for me, you know? So, um, no. And, Usually there's grass and that's why this buzz bait I think works so well because it has two blades that knock together and there's no grass to get caught up in it. So it could, you could it was every time it was just ripping along, you know, perfectly going along, just being annoying, being annoying, being annoying, and they would just crush it. Um, so that was cool. <laughs> but yeah, I like to fish buzz baits for smallmouth. It's just my thing. Um, but, but the fact uh, that you don't like the trailer hook, that's interesting because, like, I mean, I just feel like that's so important to have that, at least when I fish largemouth and things like that, or I'm skipping docks just because of the short strikes. And the fact that that you're able to get away with it, that's that's some confidence there. That's probably something I should do more, honestly, if I were to be honest. A lot, a lot of times I fish the lower tumic out of my boat and it's grassy and that extra hook can cost you, you know, a cast or two in a good spot. So. I try not to don't use it if I don't have to, but if they are short striking, I'll pull up a trailer and I'll, you know, I will, I do have them on the boat. Oh, I just, just try to, you know, not like not use them if I don't have to. Now you got into something else. You talked there, you hinted at with Mark Daniels jr. And you have a boat. So then is that really your origins to fishing then was fishing out of a boat? And then you came over to the kayak world. No, um, that's it's exactly the opposite. I was waiting, and then we saw a Jeff Little video. We bought kayaks, and I was just having fun every weekend, crushing smallmouth out of my kayak um, or largemouth, wherever you know, doing before I was married and had a kid, um, just doing trips and having fun and catching fish. And somehow one of my buddies talked me into tournament, you know, fishing in the Toyota series, and uh, that's fun, but it's not the fun of catching 20 smallmouth a day on the Shenandoah. So, um, no, I, I was a smallmouth river fisherman mostly. And then I just suddenly just got a wild hair and started fishing the Toyota series. And it was called the Costa series, but that's cool. the Costa series is a co-angler. And, um, it definitely helped me as a fisherman. I'd recommend everybody to do it at least one season. Um, and, but it's definitely more challenging, um, than being in your own kayak or having your own boat. Co-angling is a whole other animal. Is it, <sighs> This will piss some people off, but okay, we'll go with it. Is it, is it <laughs> Let's hard, go with it. Yeah. Is it, is it harder or is it harder or easier to be a co-angler? Because I've heard some people talk where it's like, 
as long as you catch a limit as a co-angler, you're going to probably do really well. And you yeah, really that... have no say over where you go. It's almost like a guided fishing trip in that kind of sense. So what are the challenges with being a co-angler? Um, well, you get on a boat with the person you don't know and, you, you know, and the are they going to be on fish? You know, are they on fish? Are they just there because they have a lot of money and they're retired and that's they're, they're there with their wife at the campground? You know, they are there, or are they going to be young and aggressive and catch every fish and backboat you the whole time? So, um, I say the challenge of being a co-angler is for me, like I fish out of the kayak so much before that I could always go where I wanted and do what I wanted. And like, if it wasn't having a good spot here, good day here, I'll go over there, you know? Um, whereas you get in the boat with these guys, sometimes you don't know, like I, I'm going on doing Lake Champlain this year. I'm stepping back into that world and oh, cool. you, you can be anywhere, you know, you can get in that boat and you have 90 miles of lake rivers, creeks, everything. You don't know, you don't know what you're going to face. So, but I would say it definitely is really fun. I would recommend anybody, everybody fish the Toyota series or, you know, the BFLs. Um, you know, you, you learn a lot. You certainly learn a lot and you get out of your comfort zone. You know, it forces you to fish in different ways and think of things different. I, I learn something every time I fish with somebody, uh, whether they're a pro fisherman like Mark Daniels or your average guy, just trying to, you know, pay for his entry fee and then go from there. Now, are you making the jump up to being a boater this year at Lake Champlain or are you going to still be a co? No, no. I have a, a Nitro Z7 with a 175 on her. So she's capable, but um, no. That would, that'd be just... fun on Champlain. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, you've been on Champlain then. Um, so she's capable for the Potomac, but not, not on those northern lakes, you know. Um, we'll stay right in the co-angler seat and hope my boater puts me on fish. I love fish in Champlain, so I'm looking, I just couldn't resist it. I went up there in college and my brother and I slept in the back of the truck for a couple of days at a campsite and we fished that place. That, that, it, dude, that place is a fish factory. It's insane. <laughs> it, I mean, you can fish small mouth, large mouth, like whatever you want to do, it's there. I, I, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of water and clean and the fish are, aren't very smart, which I need. Um, they're you know, not. They're they, not. And it's just insane that you can do anything. You want to fish docks. You want to fish, you know, rock piles. You want to fish cut betweens, blow betweens, which is a guy. There's a ton of islands you can fish between because there's current and stuff. Um, or if you want to just just flip grass, like it's I flip insane. grass at Mike, Mark Daniels all day long. He top ten uh, in that event, you know. Um, and you know, just flip grass all day. You know. <laughs> Well, that's no, gonna I never help thought you, I would do that. That's going to help you with that skill, bringing that back to the Potomac River then. Absolutely. Yes, without question. I learned so much being with a guy like that on that river around grass, just how he approached it, you know, what he was thinking. He was really cool and like, you know, kind of like just open book, you know, wasn't worried about it, just fishing. And we had a great day, really great day. I always, not, I mean, try fishing. I fished with, um, now with the, um, Ron... Oh, it escapes me. I own the Potomac. I'll, I'll come up with the name later, but um, he's uh, Ron Nelson. Yeah, I got I could drew Ron Nelson on the Potomac River. He's a sight fisherman, but he showed me how to sight fish on the Potomac River. You know, like what you couldn't pay enough money for a guy to. Insane. It, it is insane. And he caught probably 50 fish in front of me and I could barely squeeze out a limit. He would he actually apologize. Like, I'm so sorry. Is he throwing like, you know, fish back that I needed? But he was just a machine. <clears throat> Has there ever been a guy that you literally didn't want to fish? You just wanted to watch because of how he was doing things. Ron Nelson. Was yeah, Ron, I would say yeah. because he was just catching so many fish um, in an area that I knew well. I fished this area on my own boat and other boats, and he was just he was catching them one after another. Like I was just like, how is he doing the? Good? And it wasn't he was using some little stick bait thing. He uh, he just would cast where they were and catch them hmm. every time. <laughs> so that's why I did kind of sit back there and he was cool. Like, you know, I had one fish miss. I was throwing a frog and the fish missed my frog. He actually said, catch. He threw me his bait, his rod. And I threw back in there. So he'd hit it. It turned out to be a snakehead. Terrible idea. Um, I pulled <laughs> Just, <laughs> but, uh, just lock up the reel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, <laughs> no. But uh, yeah, that Ron Nelson was a guy that just, uh, he was a machine. He just, he must, I know he caught 50 that day on the Potomac. I know it was 50 at least. Dude, that's that's a fun day. And then the Potomac has been fishing really well. Are, are you fishing any boat tournaments this year just with yours on the Potomac? Yeah, um, I'm doing the, the teams, the Potomac teams. Right teams. Um, I missed the first two of those <laughs> as well. One was the same time as the kayak tournament, so I missed them both for family vacation. And they canceled one Saturday. I was going to go out, um, but they had we had a small craft advisory. So I fished the teams last year out of Bass Boat and uh, as a captain, and I'm doing them this year as well, trying to get five in. Um, so I could fish a championship. 
That's good. And then, guys, guess what? I I have got it confirmed. I am going to have Bob on the show, Bob Petty, uh, and we're going to do a full deep dive on the history of Potomac teams. It's that and Battle of the Border, like the two big dogs uh, when it, around here when it comes to the, the Potomac River. Um, so when you're and I think it's important just to get everyone's like full history. And like so when you're fishing the boat and you're going back and forth to the kayak, <sighs> how much do you have to change? Like, and we talked about a little bit with like the crankbait. Do you change anything when it comes to your gear, your style? Um, to me, yeah, I, it kicked my ass going to a kayak. It really did. It, it's hard. Cause you have to really, really think you have to dial down the 85 rods you're taking to mm -hmm. five, I, you know, try to stick with five on the kayak. And I throw a lot more braid on the kayak when I'm fishing small now. Um, I'll throw a lot more braid because, um, they don't seem to care about it and you have a better chance of getting your fish in the boat. So I say that's the main difference I do on my boat. I'll throw a lot of uh, mono or fluoro, whatever. Um, but out of the kayak, I throw a lot more braid than most people do. <clears throat> with all these tournaments coming up on the Potomac river specifically, just with, with your thoughts, cause I think you guys got a Potomac team the week after the tackle warehouse invitational. So this place is going to get beat to shit. I mean, it's got, um, I mean, I just, I just recorded an episode last night and it was like, Oh, uh, it, it's the bass nation. And then you have the TBF and then you have another tournament and then you have the tack. It's like every weekend it's insane. But yeah. what, what do you think the weights are going to be like for the tackle warehouse invitational? What do you think that the, the pay cut line will be? I, I I think last year I didn't fish it, but they, they started with the Potomac and moved on to Champlain and a thousand islands. And I wish they would do that again. I think, um, it's going to be, by the time that comes around, it's going to be tough fishing. It's going to, you know, you have 200 boats fishing it all week long on practice. You'll have 50 million tournaments have already gone by. Um, so I think, well, the, someone always catches good bags, you know, every day and wins it. So I think the winning bags will be 16 to 18, um, for the tackle warehouse. Um, but for the co-anglers, you know, if you get five a day, you'll probably get a check. And oh, yeah. this is guessing, you know, if you get five oh, yeah. a day, you'll probably get a check. And, you know, uh, let's say 14 pounds one day, you're looking good for the next day and moving on to the top 10. Wasn't there a, um, yeah, there was two sevens. What, no, was it two sevens or one seven caught in the teams? I, I, forget. I think they caught two this year. I'd look at, I'm thinking one was almost eight, I believe. Um, I, I but I, was I wasn't at those events. So I just looking at big fish and I think they've caught two. Yeah. Dude, that's insane that the weights are up like they are. And I don't know if that's just because it's just the river rats on the team series that are able to find them, or if we can start expecting some of those weights in these bigger tournaments coming up. Well, after fishing my first full year of Potomac teams, I'll tell you, if you, you better catch them. These guys know where they're at. You know, they can, these guys can fish this river. Um, so yeah, I think it's a combination of the river you know, early season. The fish haven't been beat to death. Um, you know, they know where they're at and the river's fishing. It's on, it was on fire until this past weekend, <laughs> you know? So I know it's probably back on fire now. That front Temperatures are weird, dude. Like I, I have some yes. friends down at like Smith and they're posting like, it's like 60 degree water temp 63. And it's just funky for June basically to have this kind of weather. And that's how I felt during this tournament. Um, Cause it was cold. It was a cold morning. It was like 48 when I left yeah. my house. So the water was cold. Like when I got into the, the water to put my kayak in, I'm like, this is cold. This is not how it, really how I thought it was going to be. Um, I think that's why it took a while to catch fish. <clears throat> what for people at home that want to go out and kayak fish on, on upper Potomac, Rappahannock, Shenandoah, what do you look for in an area? Or is it just that you're just looking, you're, you're catching and you're looking for size or is it specifically an area that will have the size? Yeah. For me, it's more like the water levels and the current breaks. Because smallmouth love current breaks, be it a rock, wall, whatever, tree log. Um, you know, a lot of current breaks, a lot of rock. I like rock. Um, but I look for like a nice three, three to five foot water level, you know, um, moving water. I like moving, like really moving water uh, with where you can find eddies where a big lazy fish will lay. Because um, fish are lazy just like we are. If they don't have to fight it, they won't until they want to eat. Um, so that's kind of what I look for. That's why I like the Potomac so much, the upper Potomac. <laughs> You, cause you also mentioned that your boat was super shallow. Was that something that your game plan going into it, that those fish were basically on, on the shore or did you, did you fish both dead center of the river and in the sides? Like how did that play out? I fished, um, every inch of the river. So I right. would just, would, and I, it was amazing how shallow some of the fish I caught were. Um, and I got to a stretch where I swear it was like really wide and shallow. I could see just fish 
just rolling along. And it's like they couldn't get to my buzz bait in time because they'd see it from over there by the time and they would follow it to the boat. By the time they got to it, you know, they would, I, I couldn't do nothing. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, on the next one. But um, I just fished every inch. But when I got to a spot that I where I had good current and I, it was three to five, hopefully, and there was rocks, I would anchor out and I would mm. just call it calm it and calm it until until either i got a bite or they forced me to move on you know like okay they're not gonna bite right now and i would go to an, and I, would, I wouldn't move far i would just move like to my last cast furthest cast and stop again if i still have the same conditions and just just fan out you know it's kind of like you do in, in the boat like when you get to a spot where you know there's probably gonna that's you know, holding fish um did you stay at all like and, and maybe this is not just the tournament but just in general you said you pulled a lot of big ones and you see that a lot of times with the swim bait and things like that where you'll pull a nice one did you try to like think about coming back into that area later on to see if you can get them to bite or was your mind completely like nope just keep moving to the next one what i've seen for me with the fish in, in the shenandoah anyway is it once they bite it's hard to get them to bite again you can look at them and they won't they won't bite again unless they're on beds which is shenandoah good luck finding them on beds um uh, so it, now i just move on i just it hurts and i just try to go to another stretch of river or move down a little bit and i might sneak back up if it was a good bite but um i find that just covering as much water as you can for smallmouth in, in a smaller river setting or a river setting is the way i'm able to catch them the best does that does that affect you at all that you're floating down river like when it comes to just lining up your cast and your target points. It, it was brought up to me. I think this is interesting for me personally. Like I want to do better at getting myself in the right position. And I feel like sometimes I float past it and then I have to set back up to get my right angle. I'd say that's the biggest mistake I made when I first started kayak fishing. I would be so eager to put the bait somewhere. I wasn't, didn't have the boat right or things weren't right. And I would like miss the whole cast because I'm floating past it or I'm not going to, and that's where, you know, learning to just take your time and think about your cast. You might only have one shot at the spot if you're moving. So you got to think about like where, of course, this all looks great, but where is the fish going to be? I have the biggest fish, like what section of this 20 foot area that I can only fish because I'm moving. And do I think there's going to be a fish and that might not mean hitting every spot or the next best looking spot. I just try to like be set up for success and it takes a while to learn that it's kind of like a rhythm to it and the anchor helps like if you get into a spot where it looks good and you can anchor and it, it really does help for catch a small mouth on a river jackie i mean again thank you so much for coming on the show tonight i really appreciate it um you know congrats on your big win what do you have coming up for you this season um so I'm going to fish, you know, hopefully the rest of the, the NVKVA events. Um, so that'll be the Battle of Five Lakes and uh, that'll be the title Rappahannock, which I've only fished a few times. And as we're in um, Costa slash Toyota series tournaments, so that I'm really excited for that. Um, and then I'm going to fish the Potomac teams that I can. So the lower Potomac and then I'm going to fish the... Uh, MLF Big Five Toyota Series, um, whatever whatever it's called these days, uh, the Toyota Series. Uh, so I'm going to fish Lake Champlain. If I do well there, then I'm going to go to Thousand Islands. And I'm pretty sure I'll end up at Potomac. <clears throat> With the Battle of the Five Lakes, do you I, have it narrowed down at all to any of the type no. of lakes that you might fish? No, because I don't live in Northern Virginia anymore. So for me, i got to battle through the Beltway to get to these ponds and um, – yeah, I'm gonna do some research, but I'll probably just have fun with it. And uh, no, I don't. I cannot. I, no idea. I would say that I think the res is one of those, so it's kind of hard to, to pass up the res if you have a chance to fish it. So um, I think it's, I think that's on that list. But so will everybody else. <laughs> so, you um, bring that up. Do, do, do. Let's there you see. go. We got Burke Lake. Who? No one's fishing Burke. Okay, I, <laughs> I, I am not fishing the first two. Yeah, it's like <laughs> okay, so Aquaquan Aquaquan right Reservoir. Right <clears throat> yeah, it's gonna be Aquaquan Beaver. I think Beaver Dam is closed actually. Oh really? I thought so. You, I will say if there's 100 competitors, 99 will be on the Aquaquan oh, Reservoir. Aquaquan. Oh yeah, 100. <laughs> percent I mean, who the hell's gonna win it at Frederick or Burke? Like, no, I don't think you have a shot. <laughs> if you can win it at Frederick, then let's tell me the secret. You better interview them. They better tell the truth. <laughs> oh, dude, were you there uh, in the fall for that one at Frederick? No, I skipped it. <laughs> yeah, it was a grind, man. Absolute grind. Like, I was watching some of the practice talk and stuff, and I, I've only fished that lake once. And I said, man, I'm not going to catch any fish. Um, I think my kid had a football game or something, so uh, I skipped it. Slater's Burke. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I think I think Aquan is absolutely going to get just lamb blasted. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's going to be an Aquan. Because the Mooney's, I 
this one's going to be neat. The the Nye Mooney Mons. That one would be fun to watch. Yeah, and I know where I'm going there. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I know where I'm going there uh, already. I think. I mean, it... was was one of these just opened up, or is that a different one that's on the Marine Base? That's a different like that just got opened up. I think on the Marine Base. I don't. I'm not sure. I know I fished Hunting Run before, and I have fished Mooney before, and I fished Mots. I think um, the Nye. Those are all in there. Good. Those are all fun. That could be that could be one anywhere. Um, and, and that's neat because they're all close together versus this one up here where it's <laughs> spread the heck out. Like those lakes are on all four corners of the earth. I don't even know what Sleater is. Um, I, Round Hill, Virginia. Okay. I do know where that is. The military base area, right? Uh, oh, Round Hill. That's in Northern Virginia. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, I got you. Hold on. Loudoun County. <clears throat> I'm going to have to check that one out. That one's in my striking zone to go. Fish, so. This is this is Sleaters. Uh, okay. The state park is should be right here. I like the looks of that. I'm gonna go check it out. <clears throat> yeah. Now the only thing I don't know about this park here is I don't know when they open in the daytime. I don't know if they'll let you get on at five in the morning. Another massive challenge of kayak fishing. Um, you never know if you can get on in time. Like some guy might not open the gate and you lose an hour of fishing. <laughs> yeah, dude. And that's what's so frustrating. Like some of these lakes. Like I, I don't know about like um. Like Burke and 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 Frederick. Frederick is no big deal, but a couple of these lakes on this, on this thing, like if you can't get on in time, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be able to have a chance to to get to your spot. I mean, the Shenandoah yeah. is a great example. I think Lee talked about like, you know, he wasn't going to be on the juice right away last year when he won, and he had to float. So like, what do you have to do? Is you have to think about getting up early to get down to the area so you can start your fishing. So you know, there's a lot of strategy at, involved. I woke up at three a.m. for that tournament, that smallmouth tournament. <laughs> really. <laughs> Yeah. Two and a half. I, I went to bed. I went to bed actually early. I was proud of myself. Like 930. I was in bed. And then um, but it was a long day. <clears throat> and that was just you, correct? I think, I think we covered that. But like you didn't have yeah, anyone that you were fishing with. I, me and Jimmy you. Coleman, Jim Coleman fished around each other. We try to stay away from each other, but, you know, give each other the personal space. But um, uh, we, we were in the same region. <clears throat> How did he do? I think he topped in. He topped in. OK. Yeah. That's got to be even worse if your friends are watching you lose 18 inches. <laughs> <laughs> He's a calm guy. He's a, like, I'm, I'm a spaz, you know, I'm like, ah, I don't know, make, say bad words. And he's just like, well, let's try to catch another one. That's my Jimmy <laughs> Coleman voice. Uh, he's a calm guy, kind of a good guy to have around. Actually, he was real close to me when I lost that good one uh, when it, where it broke my line. Um, and he just paddled on away. <laughs> but yeah, me and Jimmy Coleman have been fishing together for a while and he's a, he's a good stick. Yeah, he's, He's a, always a competitor in these events. Well, I mean, Jackie, again, thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything that you would like to plug or promote uh, before we go here? Um, just Tennessee Lunker Company. That's my only sponsor, and they do me right. right and this buzz bait will catch smallmouth. I promise you I'm not making that up. This sucker makes noise. Um, and, uh, yeah, the NBKBA, they run great events. If you, ha I would recommend everybody that hasn't tried kayak fishing in the tournament setting to try it. It's fun. It's um you can have fun with it. You, it doesn't have to be a pressure filled event. You can take the family um, and just go out and take a kid fishing. Definitely take a kid fishing. And it gets you to be able to scratch that tournament issue without having to drive. So, I mean, I know you live in Frederick. I live in Hagerstown now. If I want to go to Lisa Vania and fish to like the Potomac teams, that's about a five hour drive. It feels like one way to fish a tournament out of a boat. But kayak fishing, you know, I can find a tournament series that'll fish the upper Potomac up where I'm at or NVKV8. They have tournaments nearby. So you can scratch that itch closer, which is really awesome. So, yeah, without telling a boat, you know, without, yeah. <laughs> without having to worry about a boat breaking on you. Um, so, I, so, yeah, I just love the kayak fishing um, format, uh, especially the tournament series. Like, really fun for me. Jackie, thanks again for coming on. Congratulations on your big win. Again, link in the episode description to everything that we talked about today, guys. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out with the algorithm. We are the number one fishing podcast in the greater DMV metropolitan area. We might be talking, but we're done here. We'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.